Hi, I am Dr. Sakim Mansoor, and this is my channel Learning Anatomy for You. And uh, previously, I finished with you the ascending tracts of the spinal gland, and today is the last uh, lecture on my descending tracts, which is the extra pyramidal tracts. And uh, I will show uh, a little bit of detail of every uh, four tracts of them. So extra pyramidal tracts arise from brain stem and convey motor fibers to the spinal cord. These bring about involuntary and automatic control of all musculature such as locomotion, muscle tone, balance, and posture, right? So they arise from brain stem and convey motor fibers to the spinal cord. So the involuntary and automatic control of all the musculature, they are responsible for that. Locomotion, muscle tone, balance, and posture. So we will discuss the four important uh, extra pyramidal uh, tracks with you. So there are four in number, the important ones, the vestibulospinal tract, the reticulospinal tract, the rubrospinal tract, and the tectospinal tract. Like here, you could see these uh, various tracts, right? This suppose this is the reticular formation and the tract coming from there is the reticular spinal tract which is of course one lateral and one medial. And uh, this is a vestibulospinal tract, lateral and medial. And there is one tract, levospinal, and uh, its existence as a separate tract is in doubt. So I haven't um, uh, chosen to discuss it with you in today's topic. Only four would be discussed, these I've told you already. So vestibulospinal and reticulospinal tracts do not decussate. That is, they do not go to the opposite side. Thus, they are responsible for ipsilateral innervation. So as they do not cross to the opposite side, do not decussate. So their innervation is on to the same side. And the rubrospinal and tectospinal tracts decussate. They go to the opposite side, they cross to the opposite side. So hence they're responsible for contralateral innervation. I'll show you in the diagrams. So first of all is the vestibulospinal tracts. These comprise two pathways, medial vestibulospinal tract and the lateral vestibulospinal tract. So continuing with the vestibulospinal tracts, they take origin from the vestibular nuclei, right? See, these are the vestibular nuclei lying in the medulla, vestibular nuclei, which receive input from the organs responsible for balance. You know, vestibular system, and that is involved with the um, organs responsible for the balance, balance and the vestibulospinal tract. The vestibulospinal tracts carry this balance information to the spinal cord where it is always ipsilateral. So you see vestibular nuclei, vestibulospinal tract arising from there, this is lateral vestibular nucleus, for example, and the fibers coming down, and this is the lateral vestibulospinal tract. So it is not decussating, not going to the opposite side. And uh, here it comes and it is the ipsilateral. <clears throat> Fibers involved in this pathway exert control on balance and posture by innervating the anti-gravity muscles, extensors of the leg and flexors of the arm via lower motor neurons, alpha and gamma. Of course, the lower motor neurons lie in the spinal cord anterior horn. Facilitate extensors and inhibit flexors. So the vestibulospinal tracts facilitate extensors and inhibit flexors. So next is the reticulospinal tract. 
these are also of two types medial and the lateral medial reticulospinal tract takes origin from the pons medial reticulospinal tract you no know, reticular formation lies in the brain stem mainly in the medulla and the pons and uh, this medial reticulospinal tract takes origin from the pons it increases muscle tone and facilitates voluntary movements you know and you will go to the function of the reticulospinal tract and the lateral reticulospinal tract takes origin from the medulla here it is coming from that this is the reticular formation lying in the medulla it reduces muscle tone and inhibits voluntary movements so the medial reticulospinal tract it facilitates voluntary movements and the lateral reticulospinal tracts inhibits voluntary movements here it is goes reticular formation and here is the fibers coming down and here is going and here it comes the reticulospinal tract going into the spinal cord then next is the rubrospinal tracts rubrospinal tracts they arise from the red nucleus which is a midbrain structure for its detail you go back to my lecture on the midbrain it, it is beautifully explained that what is the red nucleus its afferents and efferents are mentioned over there in detail of the red nucleus right this is this, this is shown in the midbrain you identify the structures this is the medulla this is the pons and this is the midbrain red nucleus lying over there and you see these are the fibers and they come they decussate these rubrospinal tracts decussate going to the opposite side cross over there and coming down descend down into the spinal cord right so rubrospinal tract arises from the red nucleus and after emergence the fibers decussate and descend into the spinal cord so they have a contralateral inter innervation contralateral innervation innervation is on to the opposite side so continuing with the rubrospinal tracts their exact function is not certain but it is believed to have a role in the fine control of hand movements rubrospinal tracts involved in the hand movements it inhibit extensors and facilitates flexors right it inhibit extensors and facilitate flexors then again again this is uh, another uh, one is a uh, tecto spinal tracts tecto spinal tracts this pathway starts at the superior colliculus of the midbrain yeah, this is the superior colliculus two collicula is a uh, superior colliculus of course then there will be the inferior colliculus this is the anatomy of the midbrain you can go back to my lecture in the midbrain already uploaded at the youtube and this is a popular lecture so these are cor corpora quadrigemina so this is a superior colliculus in the midbrain so it starts from here right and superior colliculus receives input from the optic nerves right you know and if you go back to the again that lecture of the midbrain you will come to know that it is related with the optic nerves the neurons immediately decussate here you see they decussate go to the opposite side and they descend down and make entry into the spinal cord these end at the cervical levels of the spinal cord the tecto spinal tracts end at the level of the cervical levels of the spinal cord tecto spinal tract coordinates movements of the head in relation to the visual stimuli right the tecto spinal tract coordinate movements of the head in relation to the visual stimuli so with this this was a very short discussion of the extra pyramidal tracts previously we did the pyramidal tracts in detail and the extra pyramidal tracts are finished and the descending uh, tracts and the ascending tracts all tracts of the spinal cord are finished at my channel learning anatomy so uh, now next uh, is the 
some very important upper motor neuron lesions lower motor neuron lesions small topical uh, will discuss and the blood supply of the spinal cord and hopefully uh, we'll be finishing with the uh, uh, spinal cord discussion it's a 14 15 lectures already going on there and uh, i didn't want that any corner of the spinal cord should be left unaddressed so thank you very much please do like and uh, comment my videos and subscribe my channel please for the support which I'm doing voluntarily. Thank you very much. Bye.